Hola a todos. Öncelikle bildirin ki herkese merhaba dedim. Ee, i̇yi akşamlar. Güzel e, dinlenmeli vakitler diliyorum herkese. Bugün mişmaşemin olarak sahnelere döndüm. 5 ay bir anaokulunda İngilizce öğretmenliği geçmişim var. O yüzden belki çocuklarım dinliyordur diye The Little Prince'e devam edeceğim. Ee, ben onları çok özledim. Belki mişmaşemini çok özlemişlerdi diye kendimi göstermek istedim. Ee, size iyi dinlemeler, bana iyi okumalar. Chapter 4 I had thus learned a second fact of the great importance. This was the planet the little prince came from was scarcely any larger than a house. But that didn't really surprise me much. I knew very well that in addition to the great planets, such as the Earth, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, to which we have given names, there are also hundreds of others. Some of which are so small that one has a hard time seeing them through the telescope. When an astronomer discovers one of these, he doesn't give it a name, but only a number. He might call it, for example, asteroid 3251. I have a serious reason to believe that the planet from which the little prince came is the asteroid known B612. The asteroid has only once been seen through the telescope that was by a Turkish astronomer in 1909. On making, her, on making his discovery, the astronomer had president to the International Astronomical Congress in a great demonstration, but he was in Turkish costume And so nobody would believe that, he said. Grown up are like that. Fortunately, however, for the reputation of Astroinit B612, a Turkish dic the dictator made a law that his subjects, under pain of death, should change to European costume. So, in 1920, the astronomer gave his demonstration all over again, dressed with impressive style and elegance. And this time, everybody accepted his report. If I have told you these details about the asteroid and made a note of its number for you, it's on account of the grown up and their ways. When you tell them that you have made a new friend, they never ask you any questions about essential matters. They never say to you, what does his voice sounds like? What games does he love best? Does he collect butterflies? Instead they demand, how old is he? How many brothers has he? How much does he weigh? How much money does, it, does his father make? Only from these figures do they think They have learned anything about him. If you were to say, the grown's up, I saw a beautiful house made of rosy brick with jenny rims in the windows and those on the roof. They would not be able to get any idea of that house at all. You would have to say to them, I saw a house that cost twenty thousand dollars. Then they would exclaim, oh, what a pretty house that is. Just so you might say to them, the proof that the little prince existed is that he was charming, that he loved, and that he was looking for a ship. If anybody wants to a ship, that is the proof that he exists. And what good would it to tell them that? They would straw their shoulders and treat you like a child. But if you say to them, the planet he came from is asteroid B612, then they will be convinced and leave you in a peace from their questions. They are like that. One must not hold it against them. Children should always show great forbearance 
towards grown-up people. But certainly, for us who understand life, figures are a matter of indifference. I should have liked to be begin this story in a fashion of the fairy tales. I should have liked to say, once upon a time, there was a little prince who lived in a, pub, a planet that was scarcely any bigger than himself and who had need of had a sheep. To those who understand life, that would have given a much greater air of the truth to my story. For I don't want anyone to read my book carelessly. I have suffered too much grief in setting down those memories. Six years have already passed since friends went away from me. With his ship, if I try to describe him here, it's to make sure that I shall not forget him. To forget a friend is sad. Not everyone has had a friend. And I, if I forget him, I may become like grown up who are no longer interested in anything but figures. It is for that purpose, again, that I have brought a box of paints and some pencils. It is hard to take up drawing again at my age, when I have never made any pictures except those of ball constructors from the outside and the ball constructors from the inside since I was six. I, sh I shall certainly try to make any portraits as a true to life as possible. But I'm not at all sure of success. One drawing goes along all right, and another has no resemble to, to its subject. I make some errors too, in a little prince's height. In one place he is too tall and in another too short, and I feel some doubts about the color of his costume. So I fumble along, along as best I can, now good, now bad, and I hope generally fair to middling. In certain, more important detail, details, I shall make mistakes also, but that is something that will not be my fault. My friend never explained anything to me. He thought perhaps that I was like himself, but I also don't know how to see ship through the walls of box box boxes. Perhaps I'm a little like the grown up I have uh, had to grow old. Chapter 5 As each day passed, I would learn, in our talk, something about the little prince planet, his departure from it, his journey. The information would come very slowly, as it might chance to fall from his toes. It was in this way that I heard on the third day about the catatosphere of the baobabs. Hmm. This time, once more, I had the sheep to thank for it, for the little prince asked me abruptly, as if, as if sized by a grey dog, it's true, isn't it? That sheep eat little bushes. Yes, that's true. Oh, I'm glad. I didn't understand why it was so important that sheep should eat little bushes. But the little prince added, then it follows that they also eat baobabs. I pointed out to little prince that baobabs were not little bushes, but on the contrary, trees as that big as costless and that even a, even if he took a whole herd of elephants away with him the herd would not eat up one single bubble the idea of the herd elephants made the little prince laugh we would have not put them on top of the other he said but he made a wise comment Before they grow so big, the boobobs start out by being little, 
That is completely correct, I said. But why do you want to this shape to eat the little blobs? He answered me at once. Oh, come, come. As he was speaking of something that was self-evident, and I was obliged to make great mental effort to solve this problem without any assistance. In that, as I learned, there were on the planet where little prince lived, as on all planets, good plants and the bad plants. In consequence, there were good seeds from good plants and the bad seeds from bad plants, but seeds are invisible. They sleep deep in the heart of the earth's darkness until someone among them is seized with the desire to awaken. They, this little seed, will spread itself and begin to merely at first to push a charming little spring in a forest leaf upward toward the sun. If it's only a sprout of radish or the spring of rose bush, uh, bush one would let it grow well wherever it might wish. But then it is a bad plant one must destroy as soon as possible, the very first instead that one recognizes it. Now, there were some terrible seeds on the planet that was the home of the little prince. And these were the seeds of the Boabob. The soul of that planet was infested with them. A Boabob is something you will never, never be able to get rid of, the, of if you attend to it too late. It spreads over the entire planet. It bores clear through it with its roots. And if the planet is too small, and the boabobs are too many, they split in pieces. It is a question of discipline. The little prince said to me later on, when you have finished your own toilet in morning, then it's time to attend the toilet of your planet. Just so, with the greatest care, you must see to it that you pull up regularly all the boabobs. At the very first moment, when they can be distinguished from the roses, which they resemble so closely in their early seed. It is very tedious work, the little prince added, but very easy. And one day he said to me, you ought to make beautiful drawing so that the children where you live can see exactly how all this. That will be very useful to them if they were to travel some day. Sometimes, he added, there is no harm in putting off a piece of work until other day. But when it's a matter of bobs, that always means a catastrophe. I knew a planet that was inhabited by a lazy man. He neglected three little bushes. So, as the little prince described it to me, I have made a drawing, drawing of that planet. I do not much like to take the tone of the moralist, but the danger of the boabobs as a little understood, and such considerable risk will be run by anyone who might get lost on the asteroid that for once I'm breaking through my deserve, my reserve. Children, I say plainly, watch out for the boabobs. My friends, like myself, have been skirting this danger for a long time without ever knowing it. And so it is for them that I have worked so hard over this drawing. The lesson which I pass on, by this means it's worth all of the trouble it has cost me. Perhaps you will ask me, why are there no, no other drawing in this book as a magnificent and impressive as a drawing of the Boabobs? The reply is simple. I have tried, but with the others I have not been successful. When I made the drawing of the Boabobs, I was carried beyond myself. 
by the inspiring force of argent necessary. So, 15 dakika olmuş. Chapter'ımızı bitirdik. Bugünlük bu kadar diyelim. Ee, herkese iyi akşamlar.